Today I want to get into the blood supply to the small and the large bowel. And I want to apologize ahead of time for the graphics, but I'm not allowed to use someone else's artwork because of copyright laws, so I drew this myself. If you really want to see a good anatomy, look in a book or look online. There's a really great online app called Digital Human, BioDigital Human. You go to biodigital.com and you sign up for it. It's a free app, but it will give you a great view of the anatomy in a 3D perspective that you can spin and see how it sits in diff from different angles. So that I would highly recommend. So in the meantime, I will just show you what I have and you can just supplement it by looking at the real thing. But this should give you an idea. This is also the last in the series before I actually get into more of the interoperative considerations and actions that would be taken. So you have your patient's right side and your left side. Here's the inferior vena cava running down here. Here's your aorta running down here, your left kidney, your right kidney, your iliacs. You have your superior mesenteric artery here and your inferior mesenteric artery here. And I just want to point out, remember how early I was talking about you might have some dead bowel after a triple A on the left side. Usually aortic aneurysms are in this area, abdominal aorta. So you can see how the superior mesenteric artery is spared. So the right colon and two thirds of its transverse colon would not be affected. But you can also see how the inferior mesenteric artery sits right here where it would be involved in the aortic aneurysm and you may have some post-op complications with either occlusion or clotting that will cause ischemia to the second third, the last third of the transverse colon and down to the descendings and on down. So you can see how they could have dead bowel from that. So now I'm going to put up a little video, not a video, a graphic, excuse me, of the blood supply to the right colon. But before I actually get into that blood supply, let's just talk briefly about what they are. This is the superior mesenteric artery here. You have your middle colic here. You have your right colic here. You have your ileocolic here. Your ileocecal going here. Then you have your intestinal branches coming off here and your um, splenic flexure here, hepatic flexure here. And this is the pancreas. And the best way I can describe the pancreas, which actually someone else said it and it's a great description, it looks like chewed bubble gum. It can either have a pinkish color to it or it can yellowish or pinkish yellow. And when you see it, you see that bubble, chewed bubblegum look, and it's pretty unique to the pancreas, so you know what that looks like. But before I get into the different offshoots of the superior mesenteric artery, and of course this is your appendix, this is your large bowel ascending here, and you have your tinea running up and your transverse descending, and we'll see the rest when we look at the left side in another graphic. So... What they count on is you have these branches coming off your superior mesenteric artery. Then you have, and you can look at it better in a, an anatomy book than what you see here. You check it out. You have what's called the marginal artery of Drummond that runs along the edge of the bowel and it co connects the superior mesenteric artery and the inferior mesenteric artery. And they meet somewhere near the splenic flexure. They count on this because this has a collateral circulation for when they do a bowel resection. They're counting on that marginal artery of Drummond to help healing and provide blood collateral, collateral blood flow to the area of the anastomosis after the resection. Now, when this art, marginal artery of Drummond meets from the two, the superior mesentery and inferior mesenteric at the splenic flexure, it can thin out or it can completely disappear here, which means there's not good blood collateral circulation to this area. So they tend to avoid, they will avoid doing a, a resection at the splenic flexure because it tends to have more ischemia and it doesn't heal as well because the mar marginal artery of Drummond is either minimal or lacking there. So let's go on to the superior mesenteric artery is here and let's go to the different parts. You have the middle colic 
which is going to go to the transverse colon here. Okay, and then you have the right colic, which is going to go to the ascending colon. Iliocolic provides some of that, and then it branches off into the ileocecal, which goes down to the cecum here. And note where the appendix is. Sometimes, and I didn't really talk about it in bowel problems, but when you have appendicitis, maybe I'll do one on that later. If some of you are interested, please let me know, and I'll, I'll add that to this series. Uh, they may have a retrocecal appendix that instead of hanging down there, it's, it's tucked behind the cecum. They're a little more difficult to treat. So then you also have, coming off your superior mesenteric artery, you have the intestinal branches that come down here, and they will supply the ileum, which is here, and the jejunum. So there you have your right colon, the blood supply to your right colon. And just I just want to point out with this, um, if they were doing, I had also talked about it earlier, about the malignant versus the benign. So say they were doing a benign, resecting the part of the right colon here. The, this would all be covered in mesentery. So the blood vessels would all be buried in the mesentery that go down um, to near the spine where they attach. And um, they would be looking for that area of the mesentery that carries the blood vessel to that area of the bowel. So this would be what's called, and we'll see it later, and we'll actually see it in the video at the end of this series. It's would be called the vascular pedicle because it's the tissue that carries the vessel that supplies the blood to whatever area they're concerned about. And in this, it would be the bowel. So they'd be dissecting on either side. If it was benign, they'd be doing up close here and sparing as much as they can down here because it's benign, they don't have to worry about margins. If it was malignancy that they were concerned about, then they would be wanting to get the sentinel lymph nodes and the lymph nodes in the area. So they would be dissecting all the way down to here and getting the lymph nodes out too. So that's the difference between um, a malignant and a benign. Now let's look at the left colon. So you have your splenic flexure here. You have your aorta. This is a mesentery coming here. You have your marginal artery of Drummond running around there. Here's your inferior mesenteric artery, which you have your left colic that's going to do the descending colon and the transverse. And then you have down here are coming your sigmoid branches right here that are going to do the blood supply to the sigmoid. This is a sigmoid here. And this is the rectum. You have your superior rectal artery coming off here that's going to supply the blood to the rectum. So hopefully that gives you just a little overview of what the blood supply is to the bowel and gives you a little picture so you understand when they're doing the vascular pedicle and doing the reception what they're looking for and then you can help better.